Thank you for joining. My name is Clint Higley. With me, as always, is Michael Dorr. Uh, today, we're talking about simplifying your contracting process with Documents Corpac and Dynamics 365. And uh, just talk a little bit about today, why we kind of chose this topic for the webinar today. So we kind of sent out a survey, we, you know, as you saw, you filled out that survey at the beginning. We love surveys. Uh, so we surveyed um, a lot of our customers uh, just to kind of find out what they're doing with Documents Corpac. We wanted to kind of know. And what was really interesting, as you can see here, 23% of all the documents that are generated with Documents Corpac are contracts, whether that be with e signatures or just contracts in general. Um, we're also starting to see that number kind of grow over the years. So we kind of wanted to cover this topic today because, you know, this contracts are kind of required across various modules inside of Dynamics 365. You know, the sales, field services, customer service, also in Power Apps, right? We're seeing that. Some examples from our customers would be proposals and purchase agreements. Uh, it's just agreements like NDAs, um, HR documents, so employee contracts, uh, leases, et cetera, right? The kind of list kind of goes on. So I want to kind of cover the Documents Corpac e-signing process just to kind of show you guys like what, if you're not familiar with it, just what we kind of do, right? So the main thing here is we have data for a contract inside of Dynamics 365. And the goal is that you always want to have that signed document stored on the record that you, um, you know, you send the contract out or whatever. You want to have that thing stored on the record. So there's three steps here with using Documents Corpac to kind of get this, get this together to do that process. The first part is um, the contract design, right? And that's all done in the template designer. Um, if you are familiar with the template designer, you can use that to map um, different fields or different data, bring your business, business data in from Dynamics 365. You can set the e-signature tags um, very, very easily. And you can also define a, a number of signees, right? Your number of signees that you're going to have, right? So after you're done with that, you didn't upload the document for your users or the contract for your users to then use, right? So you've created that and then they will go ahead and they can create a contract in one of two ways. Um, they can either do it via the command bar dialog, right? So the Documents Corpac dialog, if you're familiar with that, or totally automated via Power Automate, right? You can set that up. And those are two things that we're kind of going to go over today. Last but not least, after you kick those two, after you kick those two off, whether through the dialog or the or flow, it starts the e-signature process uh, using the Dynamics 365 integration of the e-sign providers and the e-sign providers that we support. They use the big three that most people have heard of. It's Adobe Sign, DocuSign, and Assure Sign, right? So after that's said and done, we've kicked it off. It's gone over to the e-signature providers. Um, what happens is that whole process that everyone's familiar with, they're basically the user is going to sign that document via the native UI of the e-signing provider. And then once that's done, then it's filtered back to Dynamics 365. So it's basically a totally closed loop. The main benefits of this naturally are it eliminates a lot of manual steps, right? You know, we just we're basically going from Dynamics 365 using Documents Corpac. It's all kind of self-contained. All this is self-contained inside of Documents Corpac. Um, so that whole process, you don't even have to send it off to the easy industry provider. Documents Corpac kind of does all that for you. So it eliminates a lot of manual steps, you know, getting that contract back, saving it to SharePoint, whatever. It all just kind of stays in here right? That eliminates a lot of, you know, possibilities of possible errors, and it's going to save you time. The process is done really, really quick. So it basically, like I said, it's the whole process is, is entirely streamlined, and it gives you that improved customer experience, right? So, so let's talk a little bit today about what we're going to do in the live demo. Uh, I'm going to show you kind of how to prepare a contract in Word. Um, really simple and uh, how to generate custom contracts with a single click using the Documents Corpac dialog, and how to automate the contract generation via flow. And we're gonna go over how to use that uh, Documents Corpac connector, the, the e-signing piece. So the first thing that I wanna go ahead and bring up is a Word. So if you're familiar with this, uh, you know if you've used Documents Corpac before, this is just the template designer here. So I have my add-on. So what I'm going to do here, I have a couple of fields that I need to insert here, a date field, a name field, just the standard things. If you've used Documents Corpac before, you've kind of done this. If you haven't, this is basically how uh, we will um, insert fields, right? So the first thing I want to do is have the name of the user. 
that I'm sending the contract to. And I'm just waiting here for this uh, control to load. It just takes a second. But yeah, as you can see here, we just have this non-disclosure agreement that I'm going to be sending out. Uh, just This is just a typical uh, non-disclosure agreement. It just has all the jargon and everything like that in there. You can see here, I've already put in a couple of documents, Corpac fields. Um, but here I'm going to set up my e-signature fields um, that are going to be used. And uh, yes. Yeah, so Let's see here. I'm also going to insert a date right here. So, yeah. All right, here we go. So, first thing I want to do is go ahead and put in the user's full name here and get that in the right spot. So, this is basically how we would insert um, the fields from uh, into into my into my template here. Just go ahead and find that. I'm going to use the user's full name. Double click it. It puts it right in there. So here, what I want to use for the date is I want to actually use um, the DocuSign. I'm going to be doing working with DocuSign today. And what I want to do, be doing here is using that DocuSign signed on date, that sign on date tag. Right. So really, really simple. As you can see here, um, I just basically click here, the little down arrow, and it gives me um, access to my DocuSign fields. You can see also for Adobe Sign, it has the Adobe Sign fields, et cetera, as well. So the DocuSign item here, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna insert the date signed. Oop, inserted in the wrong spot because my cursor was off. So let's do that again. DocuSign and then just the date field, date signed, right? So it puts that right into the document, right? So DocuSign, that's the tag that DocuSign is gonna fill out. The next piece here that we're gonna do is add our signature blocks. So we'll do our first signature block here, DocuSign item signature. And we have another signee, so DocuSign item at another signature. Now, I need to tell um, the, uh, DocuSign the sign order, right? And it's really easy to do. So the first one is actually going to be, um, uh, it's, it's going to be our owning user here. So what I want to do is to go to my field properties right up here, click the thing, go to my field properties, and you can see who this belongs to. So uh, my owning user is going to be the second signee, right? I'm going to just make him the second signee. And also I can pick the sign order. Say if I want someone to sign something first, I can pick the order which they uh, which they sign in, right? So here, uh, this signature block belongs to the second signer and his sign order is number two. It's, it's second in the order. Uh, let's see. Let's put in this next one here. Let's make sure these field properties are good. This one belongs to signee one. And let me give him his order. Now, again, I can add as many signees as I want to, right? So if I had a third signee, you know, I could come in here, add a new signee, et cetera. A couple other things to note that you can do, you can set offsets so you can make, you know, the, the little signing block, uh, you know, be in the area that you want. You can just kind of offset it. A few other things at the top, you know, we do have some formatting things that you can do. Basically, say, for example, with the date on these field properties, who this belongs to. Um, what the sign order is exact and uh, put in like, for example, like I'm using what type of font I want, et cetera. You can do all that kind of stuff, just some small basic formatting things. So I say, okay, once I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and save the template. I can save it. I save it right back to CRM. So it's available for my users. And uh, so your user experience is going to be similar to this. Let me grab my demo system here. Uh, let's see. Where did you go? There we go. So I have my, uh, I'm on my contact record for Abraham here that I want to send this non-disclosure agreement to. Um, and how I would go about doing this is I want to use the documents core pack uh, dialogue to kind of do what I need to do. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go, I'm going to get to my create document button. Um, this kicks off the documents core pack dialogue, right? And I just want to kind of process through this uh, really quickly for you one time, just so you can see what the entire process is like. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the document that I created. It's this NDA. Um, next, I'll have my document options here. So I can do my different file types. I'm going to attach this document as a DocuSign email. Then that gives me the ability to choose uh, email addresses for my recipients. It automatically knows how many I have. 
you can also have the ability to do in-person signing as well. But it's just emails like I, uh, let's see, my first recipient is going to actually be, so actually it's the other way around. It's Abraham's first, send it to the email, and then Jon Snow, who's the only user, and I'm going to send it to his primary email, right? So you have these different little pick options that you can do. Um, after I've done that, you know, I have a bunch of other fields in here that I can actually select. I'm going to go ahead and create my document. Um, and then it'll roll through the entire process. But, you know, as you can see here, there's a lot to pick and choose from. So uh, what I do want to show is what I've done is created a what we call a one click action. I'm not going to go too in depth into that. Um, if you're interested in one click actions, we do have another webinar that we've done on this. It kind of shows you how to do this. And basically what a one click action will do for you. I've got one here at my favorites here. This is the NDA one click action. It's going to do that same entire process, except everything's already set up for me, right? So I don't have to do anything, right? It automatically is going to pick the template. It automatically tells us this DocuSign email, and I've automatically set up who the recipients are. And then all I need to do is just choose the correct email. Um, so what I'll then end up doing here is I'll go ahead and say create document. Now this is the process where uh, basically uh, the document's core pack service is taking that template. It's taking all the information that it needs and pulling that back into um, this agreement, right? So you can kind of see here, everything is filled in from Dynamics. What is missing naturally is the signature blocks, right? So what I'm going to do here is, as you can see, I'm going to click the finish and it's going to attach as a DocuSign email. So this is actually going to kick off that signing process right straight from Dynamics. Don't have to do anything. So it's just taking it a second. And now, basically, I am waiting on... Uh, whoa. Oops. <laughs> That's something completely different. I am waiting on an email here uh, to show up from DocuSign. So I have the first email from DocuSign. If you guys have ever signed a... Uh, Document, hang on one second. There we go. So I have my my email here from DocuSign. Yeah, you guys, you know, know what these look like. So I'm just going to go ahead and review this document. Kind of go through the process here. So continue. You can see here now the DocuSign, the, the field is filled out. Today's date, fill, it's all filled out. So I'll just go ahead and click start. And then I will sign this. I'll sign this as myself, right? Go ahead and click finish. That is the first signee. Uh, once that signee is done, it will then kick off. I should get another email here. So I'll go ahead and close both these. I have my second email for my second signee here. So again, that entire process. Let's look at it one more time. So here, just continue. Again, everything's filled out. And then second signee here. So we'll do this. And this and finish All right and wait for it to get done so log in the DocuSign no thanks all right deal excellent and now what we're doing here is we're gonna it's a little bit of a waiting game so DocuSign has to process the thing it needs to come back into dynamics it takes just a few seconds um well not a few seconds but it eventually just will wind up here on my timeline. So I'll just refresh one more time. And there we go. So you can see here, I've got the non-disclosure agreement that I've sent out. I'll just go ahead and open that up. We'll take a look at it. And you can see everything in here is signed. Let me just, I'm gonna download this so you can see it a little bit better. Let's see. And we'll just go ahead and open that up so we can see a little bit better. As you can see, everything's kind of filled out here. Uh, that I've got the date in there. I've got all the signatures and everything that I need when it was signed, et cetera. So I have all that in there. And as you can see, it just goes through the entire process. Never had to leave Dynamics, really, except for the signing process. And everything's kind of self-contained, right? Still, uh, you know, you can see that's, of course, the manual process, right? Um, what happens like if you want to do like say for example we want to use a flow um, to kind of kick this whole thing off so I've kind of have a flow already sort of built again this is just a just a standard flow this is um, 
you know, win a row, I'm just working off a trigger. You can do this in many different ways. You can have a manual process or a manual button or whatever. I'm just using a trigger for this, for this example. Uh, the next little piece here is that, uh, so basically what happens is it, it pulls back that record. Then I know I'm going to be using the owning user. So I actually need to pull the values from the owning user um, so I can um, insert things into uh, the, uh, the, uh, the action that I'm going to be using. Here, what we're doing is we're using the Documents Core Pack Connector to create a document. It's relatively simple, right? So we have to create that document first, just like you know you saw in the dialogue, right? So basically, I'll give the temple, uh, the template. I give it the row ID, which is the uh, the contract uh, or the contact ID here, and the file type I want to output. Again, you have a lot of advanced options, just like you did in the dialogue, where you can you know save it to SharePoint, attach it to an email, print it, etc. You have all that in there. So you can set all this up if you want to, right? So what I need to do now is I need to add another step and we're going to do the documents core pack. Let's see, document core pack. Come up with that. So I'll take the documents core pack connector and I want to do uh, e sign. I want to do the signature job. So I want to create a signature job here. Um, so basically, as you can see here, uh, it's just uh, got a few things that I need to fill out. So I need to give it the um, the ID of the so the contact. So get row, but no. So the unique identifier of the contact. So the GUID of the contact. I need to put that in there. I need to select the table that we're going to be using here. So this is going to be contacts right uh the document job id we're actually going to be pulling from here this created document job really easy to find so i just go to my dynamic values i have my i wonder if yeah so i have my create document job step and this is the things that it returns to me i have the jo document job id i'm just going to use that simple enough and then i need to select a signing provider right so we'll be using docusign uh here i need to give it the signing name so let's go ahead and grab uh, the full name of this is so remember this is the uh, the owning user it's, this is why it helps to label things but I, you know I kind of want y'all to see that but this is the owning user this is the full name of the contact now I need the email of the email address of the contact so let's grab the email right. And then I can say whether or not it's signing in person. And then I want to give it a subject. I want it to be nice and clear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it the uh, the file name of the document that I'm sending. All right. And then I can provide a message, a phone number, et cetera, DocuSign host name, all this kind of stuff, a few little extra fields. But this is really all I need to do to set up the first signee. To set up a second signee, what I need to do here is go ahead and click Add New Item. So it's the same thing again, second signee here. Let's go grab my dynamic values and let's go with full name. All right, so I'm gonna get the full name of the owning user, the email address of the owning user. So let's see, primary email here and uh, whether or not they're signed in person and then the subject as well. Same thing again, the file name, right? That's all I need to do, right? That's all I need to set up. So let's go ahead and save that. All right. And give it just a second to save. Oh. Yep, I do have to fill that in. So, oh, so. Faults. Alts and then let's save it. So you need to fill in that whether it's true or false. All right. So let's go ahead and kick this off. Um, let's see here. Uh, so it's just basically just a my little trigger here. It's just to change the job title. That's what it's looking for. And it's just for demonstration purposes. So I'll save it here. And then come back to my flow.
let's take a look. And uh, we've already got the and so it's just going to go through the entire process, create the um, document, and uh, use it takes a few seconds to go ahead and create that thing, and it's on to the next. There we go. So 14 seconds to create that document. And then what I'm waiting on here is I'm just kind of waiting on the email to show up. Um, I'm not going to go make you guys look, watch me sign the same document again. So I just want to show you here. What happens again it takes a few minutes so here's my first email already coming in uh for that whole signing process right and then i just go through the whole thing and then it'll save right back to um dynamics doc, uh, docusign will save that right back to dynamics whoo okay so let's grab that so want to let you guys know that uh of course you know, if you haven't used Documents Corp Act, free trials are available for all our add-ons. There's no functional limitation. So everything that I've done today, you can do as well. Um, it is fully supported during the trial period, and it takes you roughly about 30 minutes to get started. Okay. So really, really simple to set up. If you have any questions, you know, you let us know. I do want to thank everybody for coming today.